Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? And welcome to our webinar Wednesday recap. Every week we host a live webinar here at Dotto Tech, and this is a recap, a condensed version of the live webinar, sort of like the Coles Notes or the Cliff Notes version of the webinar. So this webinar today is on Facebook ads. It's a little clickbaity title, I will admit. It's why you shouldn't be doing Facebook ads. And what I actually mean is I think people should be doing Facebook ads, but we shouldn't be running them ourselves. It's become far too complex a process. And Facebook, I think, basically takes advantage of our naivete now uh, when we create ads because in order to effectively create Facebook ads, I think it's pretty much a full-time job. You have to be doing it all the time in order to effectively create Facebook ads. So this webinar this week is designed to teach you the basics of Facebook ads so you can understand all of the different mechanisms in place and make good decisions on whether you should be doing them and how to enact Facebook ads. Basically, how to hire professionals that will help you and what you should be spending on them. So sit back, relax, enjoy today's webinar. But before we get into the actual meat of the webinar, a reminder that you can join us weekly for live webinar Wednesday. We host one of these webinars each and every week. The links are in the description below should you choose to join us. And if you don't have time to join us, well then tune in next week when we'll have another Webinar Wednesday recap for next week's webinar. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy Webinar Wednesday, why you should not be doing Facebook ads. why I don't think you should be doing Facebook ads. Now I'm gonna admit right off the top, this title of today's webinar was a little bit clickbaity. I actually think Facebook ads are a terrific way to advertise if the people that you wanting to reach are on Facebook. I just think Facebook ads have reached a level of complexity that the average person should not be running their own Facebook ads campaign. I think Facebook takes big time advantage of our naivete by allowing us to run ads uh, when we have absolutely no idea what we are doing. And most people running Facebook ads, I dare say, have no idea what they're doing. And as a result, Facebook once again is taking advantage of us uh, by, by basically selling us a bill of goods, telling us this is a great way for us to be promoting our product, when in fact we could be doing far better if we knew what we were doing. Now, having said that, we can understand the mechanisms of Facebook ads. We can understand the things that makes Facebook ads work and the pieces of the puzzle. And I think if we understand in a global aspect how Facebook ads work, we can make better decisions if we wanna use them and also what they will do for us. We're gonna assume that this conversation today is not about privacy and not about the propriety of Facebook and how much Facebook takes advantage and pries into our life and how accurate a picture they build from uh, of us and how that is an invasion of our privacy. We're gonna accept that at this point here today as just de facto. That is the way it is. It's a worthwhile conversation to have about how much data Facebook is gathering on us and Google and all of the other online services, but that's a far more subtle conversation on a different level. Right now we're talking about Facebook ads and the advertising. So let's just accept that Facebook is gonna try and scrape every little bit of information about us that they can and how we take advantage of that ourselves in our own business, okay? We can all have a shower afterwards if we feel a little bit dirty after doing this. And frankly, every time I use Facebook ads, I do feel like I need a shower afterwards. There's two aspects to the Facebook ads, uh, three aspects, I guess. There's information we gleefully give to Facebook within our profile and our activities on Facebook. Now, we're the, that, those are the ones who are being advertised to. The second piece of the equation is what happens outside of Facebook, how people and how Facebook can track us in our activities outside of Facebook, which allows them to hone in and target on even more specific what we are interested in for our ads. And then the third part of the equation is the person creating the ads, the narrative and the creative and the strategies behind the ad themselves. So we'll touch on all three of those as we work through this right now beginning with our own profile and our own information. Facebook, of course, from the moment you sign up for a Facebook page, Facebook is, or a Facebook account, Facebook is gathering data on you, uh, millions and millions of data points. Every activity you do within Facebook, they track with purpose, and they build a very, very accurate picture of you just from your own activities on Facebook. Accept that as a fact. 
Now that means that, of course, we have a nice profile built of us, but it also means that if we choose to uh, use those tools, use the ability that Facebook has to target our ads effectively, we can also create an incredibly targeted and um, laser focused campaign and advertising program towards individuals who are likely to be interested in our product. Facebook has something called a tracking pixel, which I or you or anybody who has a website can use to define a far more accurate target of who's interested in their product. What the Facebook tracking pixel does is it's a little bit of code that you put on your own website. And I want you to imagine this scenario. Imagine I'm promoting uh, on my Facebook ads, this webinar, the webinar that we are watching right now. Let's say that it's, uh, it's something that I attach revenue to, so I'm happy to advertise it to a community, maybe a cold and a warm audience, so either people who already know who I am, but also people who may not know who I am. And I want to see how many of those people sign up for the webinar who I advertise to. So with the Facebook tracking pixel, what will happen is in people's feed, based on whatever criteria we put forward at the beginning, there will be ads for Webinar Wednesday. And it'll say, join me on Webinar Wednesday. <clears throat> Everybody sees that ad that, that, that's in the target group over time. It scrolls through their feed. And a certain percentage of those people go, hmm, Webinar Wednesday, that's interesting. And they click on the link. Well, first of all, them clicking on the link tells Facebook there's somebody that they're interested in it. So that is fantastic. But then they go, by clicking on the link, they might go to my page. Now they've moved off of Facebook's page, so Facebook has now lost touch with them. They don't know what's happening. They don't know if they're signing up for the webinar or they're just looking at the information. Uh, Facebook has no idea at that point, unless we put a tracking pixel on our page. Then that pixel, Facebook is able to track their journey through our website by following that pixel. And if we have a pixel where they go to our website, we, that's called a conversion, where they've come to our, they've done the activity that we want, and let's say that you sign up for the webinar, we put a different pixel, or actually it's the same pixel, but just on a different page, on the thank you page. So now I know that X number of people went using my Facebook ad, went to the landing page to look at the webinar, and a subset of those people actually registered for the webinar. So that those are the people who fully converted on my campaign. So my campaign has multiple stages. First of all, to show you my ad, Secondly, to get you to come to my website and hopefully sign up for the webinar. And thirdly, to actually sign up for the webinar. And then I will have a uh, report based on all of those activities that I can say how much it cost me then to, to show it to a person, to get a person to come to my page, and to have that person finally convert. So these tracking pixels are essential when we get down to the granular level of actually dealing with individuals. We also call them retargeting pixels because once with a pixel is put on you, we can create a custom audience of just the people who the pixels on and we can do more aggressive marketing to those people. So that's how, how all that works. Now that's not rocket science. Although it's, it is pretty advanced technology, but we're using that sort of technology in a variety of different ways in online advertising. Have you ever wondered why if you happen to do research and look up a certain vacuum cleaner, that before you know it, uh, all of a sudden in all of your feeds are ads for that vacuum cleaner from a variety of different online retailers. It's the exact same technology in place of tracking pixels following us through and retargeting. Retargeting because you've indicated an interest in, in, the, in the product that they, are, that they are showcasing. So that's how the, you know, that's kind of the, the picture of Facebook ads from the global aspect of advertising in the feed through to the granular aspect of targeting certain individuals and knowing exactly if they've converted into whatever uh, the act action is that you're looking for them to do. So that's how it works kind of at 30,000 feet. But boy, when you get into it, I think you'll see exactly what it is I'm talking about. Um, if you can sign up and you set up your ads manager, I'm gonna take you into my ads manager here. And now I'm gonna tell you right up front, I run Facebook ads every month. We run different ad campaigns here at Dotto Tech, and they're just small little campaigns, typically selling uh, 99, 49, or $149 courses. And I think just by looking at the complexity of these screens, you will gain an appreciation for how sophisticated Facebook ads are, 
but you'll also gain an appreciation for the fact that you probably shouldn't be doing this yourself. Take a look here. So here we see all of these tabs that allow us to have an account overview, which talks to us basically about how just our general overall advertising account is doing and how much we're spending on it and how much reach it is and how many people it's getting. Here, I spent $305 this month on Facebook ads. And it's, to be honest right now, my ad campaigns are not going terrifically well, but we're in the we're in the kind of the embryonic stage of a new series of campaigns. Campaigns are kind of global sets of ads that are designed uh, around, for example, we're doing these around selling an online course on making money on YouTube. The ad sets are collections of ads against those uh, th that are part of the campaign that we target to different custom audiences and to different individuals. And then finally, the ads themselves. And if you take a look here, you see how many ads we have running for just one simple little online course. Look at that. So this is where the complexity starts to show its head. We have ads where we split test the copy, where we'll have one title on one ad and another title on another ad, one image on one ad, an image, different image on a second ad, a call to action on one ad, a different call to action on the other ad. And then we have to track all of these different iterations of the ad to determine which one works the best. And then finally, that's the one that you put a little bit more money behind and you drive and you kind of ride the coattails of that ad of the most successful one. But we don't know what's going to work. This is part art, part science in creating these ads. So this is, I think, probably one of the first places that you get a picture of what a ads manager is going to do for you, what a person who's running your ad campaign is going to do for you, is managing all of these different variables in your creative. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. If we go here under the ads manager drop down, and uh, they only show us three things here, audiences, pixels. But if we take a look here, we can see how many different tools and how many different areas uh, advertising managers, Facebook managers have to kind of work their way through and understand in order to run an effective campaign. Audiences are a huge part of how, the, uh, how a campaign works because out of the millions and millions and millions of people on Facebook, you have to determine which audience works, how, you know, who you're going to actually send your ads to. So if we take a look here, we have multiple custom audiences that have been created for just for my little venture here at Dottotech. Now, these audiences come from a variety of different areas. The first and most obvious audience are the people who've liked our Facebook page. That's pretty easy. Secondly, we can upload all of the email addresses from our newsletter list from our email list, and that creates a second custom audience because a large percentage of our email list, people will be using their same email address for their Facebook account so Facebook can identify them. So that creates a new subset of a warm audience that we can target to. So instead of sending out newsletters, we can send Facebook ads that remind people of webinars coming up, for example, should I choose to do that. Then what happens is we take those audiences who have already signed up, either are following us on Facebook We've dropped a pixel on because they've looked at Webinar Wednesday or they've looked at our website or they are on our mail list. And we use that to create larger custom audiences. So if we say we have 2,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 people in, in our newsletter list, we upload that newsletter list and then Facebook takes that list because it knows so much about the people on that list already once it identifies who they are. And it finds a much larger catchment, maybe a million or two million people who are very similar in their tastes to those people. And that's the cold audience that you can start promoting to as well. You see the sophistication. You see the strategy start to build of how you start to, uh, start to envision an entire Facebook ads campaign. So that is part and parcel of this whole picture as well. So the bottom line today, as far as what I wanted to really make sure you understand, is how Facebook ads work. And, oh, I, was, I know what I needed to show you before I go on. I wanted to show you the trap. I wanted to show you what I consider to be the trap of Facebook ads. And let me just jump back into my Facebook account here. Here's where I have, remember how I started things off today by talking about how Facebook, I think, takes advantage of us? 
often. Here's where Facebook takes advantage. Let me take you to the Dotto Tech page. It's just a business page that we have on Facebook. This is where we post all of our content on a daily basis. Uh, any any new web, uh, webinars that we have coming up, any new videos that I've posted, I post them here all <clears throat> on the Facebook page. Now, Facebook, when I post new content here, they try to get me to boost that content. They're constantly asking me if I want to use this content to advertise somehow. Now, they don't have the slightest idea of what I actually want to do with this content. Here's a video that I just posted. And as usual, even though we have thousands of people who follow us, uh, it's got under 1,000 people reached. It's got 19 engagement, which is actually pretty good. 33 clicks of people who have clicked on the link uh, that we posted, which is just this, just a video on how to use Google Translator. Here's what they want me to do. They want me to boost this post. If I click on this, pay, Facebook will happily take my money to show my post to more people. Now, I don't have any business objective behind this right now myself, but people get caught up in boosting their posts into all sorts of different audiences um, and, and because Facebook tells them that they should and they, they think they need to be advertising on Facebook. This frankly drives me crazy. They don't like how high a proportion of text I have on the, um, on the graphic. Well, too darn bad, Facebook. Couldn't care less what you think about it. I'm happy with it. But here's what they want me to do. They want me to choose a little bit of an audience, nowhere near the sophistication of the audiences that we see, see in the Facebook ads manager. Uh, ask me if I want to run the ads on Instagram. Suggest a budget to me that it's going to reach this many people. And then make sure that they've got all of my payment information so that I can pay for it correctly. And then off we go. I can start promoting this, boosting this post and running it for other people. Well, I've got a question for me. Why? Why do I want more people to see this post? But I dare say that probably, I don't know what percentage, but it's going to be a big percentage of people who use boost post are basically throwing their money away because they don't have a real target of what they want to do with a post. And they certainly haven't built a full campaign and strategy around it. And they're not taking advantage of all of those specific tools that we were looking at just a few moments ago. This really pisses me off when I see Facebook doing this. And the number of people I know who will spend $25, $50 uh, on posts without a defined strategy. So this you should not be doing. I don't think you should be even trying to compose the main ads yourself using the ads manager. I think it's too difficult. Even doing it for quite a while myself, I was losing touch. And if I was out of it for a week, when I went back in, they'd changed the tools enough. And they, it was always a voyage of discovery every time I had to go in. And I was often lost and confused. And I'm a pretty technical guy. So we suggest here at Dotto Tech that you look at Facebook ads in the full light of day. If your community is on Facebook, if your target audience is on Facebook, by all means, come up with an ad strategy to market to them. But do it in conjunction with somebody who does it full time. Somebody whose main job and only job is running Facebook ads. If you're doing it 24 seven, if you're steeped in Facebook ads, you understand all of the mechanisms, all of the little hooks and tricks and to make Facebook ads work. And those people are gonna have their eye on the prize. They're going to want to make sure that you are getting bang for your buck and your ads are converting and you're finding value. So that brings us to the question. Great, Steve. Wonderful suggestion. How do I find said advertisers? How do I know that the person who I'm hiring knows what they're doing? We've got you covered on that. I've got Liz, who I work with on all of my Facebook ads. She's my graphic designer. She manages my Facebook campaigns. I've asked her to put together a list of questions that you should ask when you interview Facebook ads companies, things that you need to know and things that you need to know how they run their ads. So I think that that is a great starting point for you to ask the right questions and get your head into the right mind space as you go about finding somebody to run your ads for them. Don't let the opportunity that Facebook ads represents slip away and don't let Facebook take advantage of you by just throwing money at ads without really knowing exactly what you're doing. Bring a professional in and make the ads work for you. I love reading your comments and suggestions, so please post below. I do read every single one. 
If you like this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends or colleagues who may find it useful. Now make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell. And if you have time, check out some of our other videos right over there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.